welcome to another episode of Orwell's World. Uh, in today's clip we're going to be looking at how significantly World War II uh, influenced George Orwell uh, and his writing of 1984. And we're also going to move away from the war years and explore more about the social and political developments that inspired his views. So what do we know so far? Well, certainly we know that in 1949 the book was published, and this was four years after the war, a time where the experience of Nazi Germany was still very fresh in people's minds. We also know that Stalin was still in control of the USSR, and there were significant changes um, to technology and um, technological innovations, which included the atom bomb, which ultimately ended the war. Now, in the text, 1984, Orwell acknowledges the initial positives of technological development. However, he does fear that ultimately it will lead to the destruction of the human quality of life. And this is expressed in Part 2, Chapter 9 of his novel, where initially he acknowledges the potential for progress and wealth facilitated by the machine when he says that it offers, and I quote, a future society unbelievably rich, leisured, orderly and efficient, end quote. However, this idea contrasts heavily with the early images of the cityscape of 1984, where the setting looks dilapidated, old and wanting. Here, Orwell challenges the notion of the machine being a positive influence by suggesting that instead machines are actually misused by governments to exercise control and keep on and keep people on the brink of poverty. In part two of chapter nine, Orwell warns that the dangers inherent in the machine are still there. From the moment when the machine first made its appearance, it was clear to all thinking people that the need for human drudgery and therefore to a great extent for human inequality has disappeared. But, and I quote, the world today is a bare, hungry, dilapidated place. As a whole, the world is more primitive than it was 50 years ago, end quote. As such, Orwell is suggesting that, paradoxically, the machine is not a symbol of progress, but rather one of oppression, one of manipulation, one that challenges the very people who contribute to its operation, the very people who rely on it for the sustenance of their very livelihoods. And certainly this is reminiscent of the iconic images that we see in Metropolis, where the workers are slaves to the machine, they live by the machine, and they die by the machine. Orwell's personal background and his life abroad also contributed significantly to his views of the world as he knew it. We know that Orwell has lived among the working uh, and unemployed poor during the times of the Depression, and this allowed him a level of empathy that was lacking in those who lived more comfortable lives and had the education and power to contribute more actively in government policy. Orwell also fought against the fascists in the Spanish Civil War in 1936 and this furthered his um, attitudes of anti-totalitarianism um, and pro-democratic socialism. Now during the war years he worked for the BBC and he wrote propaganda during this time. However, he quit after two years as a result of feeling the pressures of censorship and becoming morally conflicted in his contribution to the propaganda machine and its publication of disinformation. Now, this bears strong resemblance with his character Winston, who also works for uh, the propaganda machine and is responsible for creating, reshaping or discarding of historical events and historical people. Additionally, Orwell was becoming more and more disillusioned by the British Labour Party. 
Churchill's War Cabinet censored the news and it controlled wages and prices, it restricted travel and it subordinated civil liberties to self-defined wartime necessity, something that Orwell had great concerns about. Ultimately, Orwell reflected a great deal of despair over the post-war state of socialism. In particular, he had serious concerns with the division of power amongst the Allies, especially in the aftermath of the war. The world of 1984 also reflects various aspects of the social and political life that existed during Orwell's time in the United Kingdom and the United States of America. Orwell is reported to have actually said that the book described what he viewed as the situation in the United Kingdom in 1948, especially when the British economy was very poor and Europe was recovering from the destruction of the war and the British Empire was dissolving. All of this um, at the same time as newspapers were reporting its triumphs and wartime allies such as the USSR were rapidly becoming peacetime foes. The increasingly estranged relationships between political allies um, and the changes that they, they were experiencing was certainly reflected in 1984 when Orwell writes, Eurasia is the enemy. Eurasia has always been the enemy. In many ways, Oceania, the fictional setting of 1984, is indeed a future metamorphosis of the British Empire, although Orwell is careful to state that geographically it also includes the United States and that its currency is the dollar. It is, as its name suggests, essentially a naval power, much of it um, being focused on militarism and veneration of sailors and seafarers serving on board floating fortresses, which Orwell evidently conceived as the next stage of the growth of ever bigger warships after the dreadnoughts of World War I and the aircraft carriers of World War II. And much of the fighting conducted by Oceania's troops certainly takes place in defence of India, the jewel in the crown of the British Empire. So as we can see, we note that his fictional um, novel does take a great deal of influence from the social and political developments that occurred during his time. Orwell expresses strong views about the role of media and propaganda as a form of recording and changing human perceptions about history and important events. History and time are inextricably connected with our sense of identity and belonging, both personally and socially. In the novel, the party newspaper is The Times, identified in Orwell's era, and to some degree even at present, as the voice of the, of the British ruling class. Rather than, as could have been expected, a publication which started life as the paper of a revolutionary party, for example, Pravda, in the Soviet Union. Note the lack of capital letters in the name of the newspaper, The Times, in the novel. What we notice is that this is a feature of Newspeak, um, the official language of um, 1984, which ultimately seeks to strip back language in order to limit individuals' power to think for themselves or develop intellectual thinking the use of neologisms such as crime stop and black white double think, as well as abbreviated and shortened terms such as ingsoc and mini true and mini love throughout the novel, reflect how the language and the power to manipulate it can be used to con control feeling and expression and therefore control the individual sense of freedom. 
certainly can also be used to limit the way people interact. Orwell's views about the changing values and structures of belief and morality in his world and the paradoxical sense of faith in a higher power, such as Big Brother, are also motivated by his own experiences of religious, religion and faith. Orwell draws on religious ideas and in part seems to have taken a parody of Catholic dogma as part of his inspiration. For example, the term Big Brother may be seen as a parody of the Catholic's Heavenly Father or God. Like the Catholic's Holy Father, Orwell's Big Brother is familiar, um, is an all-seeing, all-knowing figure from which the ruling classes derive their ultimate authority. Orwell suggests gently that Big Brother has never actually existed. The party's notions of doublethink also champion belief over rational thought. However, the ending of the novel exaggerates the power of faith as being both a source of belonging to a system as well as a source of destruction for the individual. The novel ends bleakly with, and I quote, He was back in the ministry of love, with everything forgiven, his soul white as snow. The long hoped for bullet was entering his brain. He gazed up at the enormous face. Everything was all right. The struggle was finished. He had won the victory over himself. He loved Big Brother. <laughs>